Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on this edition of Canary Coaching. Today, we're going to talk about how to use Axiom to do asset filters or condition-based asset monitoring using the filter feature. My name is Jeff Nepper. Here at Canary, I serve as the Executive Director for Business Development, and I'm really glad to have this opportunity to share a little bit of my own personal experience with helping end users and integrator partners um, achieve this goal. So I did want to cover up front some of the resources that we're going to lean on today. Uh, the first is the Canary community. You can find that at Help Center. Dot canarylabs.com. You'll also find the link to that from our main navigation on the Canary Labs website. And if you'd like the knowledge base article that will cover this information so that at later you can come back and look at it from the search box, uh, just search for the term filter. And you'll see one of the first two responses that'll come up will be a knowledge base article, how to filter asset templates and grids. Now, additionally, if you're new to the Canary community or the Help Center, uh, I do want to point out that with this resource, you will pick up additional training material, links to the on-demand Learn-As-You-Go Canary Academy, a forum that you can have conversations with other users and partners, as well as Canary staff, a list of all of our upcoming events, product release information, of course, a searchable knowledge base, and even a place where you can report bugs and uh, love your feedback uh, to us about feature requests that you'd like to see. So when you get a chance, check that out. Now, additionally, you might find that your Axiom system or your Canary system um, is not really configured in a way that's going to make doing asset modeling and filtering possible at present. If that's the case, we still want you to be able to give this a try. So from our website, if you use the Try Canary button at the top right corner, you can take part in our free Axiom demo. And that demo is set up so that you'll be able to do everything I'm showing you today. Let's talk a little bit about how you'll actually use filters. So inside of Axiom, uh, there's two controls that support asset filtering. The first is the asset template control. And the second is the grid control. Now, I will caution you that in order to do this, you have to have virtual views built inside of the Canary system, and you have to have assets named. Additionally, I want you to be aware that the filters are really looking at the last known or current value. These are not a historic search filter. Uh, additionally, uh, one of the nice features of the filter is that there is an automatic refresh available. So for instance, on the right, and this is part of the demo that we'll show, um, we have filtered at the top based on the tag called flow and asked it to return only the pumps that have a flow less than 1000. And so that has returned a list of pumps. The refresh feature would allow me to say every five minutes, refresh that list and redisplay the results. What it is within the filter that I can actually do um, is a series of condition rules. So I can take a specific tag and search uh, or filter based on the values of that tag. I can also do uh, combined rules. So I can make it multi-tag or um, I can make uh, quite long rules, which we'll demonstrate today as well. Once those results uh, are selected, I can also sort them. I can include uh, quality scores in my results, meaning I can filter by quality score. And additionally, I can use a contains feature that will allow me to look into the metadata um, as well as um, only return certain assets that contain um, uh, a string that I'm looking for. All right, let's uh, go ahead and get our environment going here with the demo. So I've done a little bit of work up front and have built an Axiom application that will um, keep me from having to build out full asset templates 
and build out full grids. But I do want to quickly show you the features that I'm talking about. Um, that way, uh, give you a little more context. So with the asset template, and again, this control would only be available if I already have a virtual view built with assets assigned. But with the asset template, it'll ask me to choose the view that I'd like to use. I've got a asset model built called Canary Coaching that has a pump example in it. And then automatically it discovers that there's 36 pumps inside of this model and gives me a panel for each pump. So as I place data points or controls on each panel, just a quick example of that. I assign an asset tag. And now I'm seeing all of the flows for those pumps. Notice at the top is the filter. All right, now likewise, if I wanted to uh, demonstrate the grid, a grid is a table meaning that it is set up for me to be able to drag labels and value boxes and spark charts into it. But a grid also has the ability to have an asset type assigned to it. So the same thing, I could choose my virtual view, assign the pump to the grid, and then it will look into my model and discover all 36 pumps. And in the first column, it will place an asset label for each of those pumps. Again, I now have a filter across the top that I can use. All right, so I hope that was helpful just to at least show you um, the controls that we're using. Let's talk about the asset template first. So in this asset template, I have uh, modeled a pump. Uh, I have a tag that's representing flow, and you can see that that tag ends in flow, F-L-O-W. I have a tag that represents the state of the pump, state tag. Then I have a tag called DIS underscore PT. It's my discharge. And then I have my suction. Additionally, uh, not pictured, I have another tag associated with a pump uh, that is a discharge high set point. So if I wanna use the filter first and use it just to find pumps that have a certain flow condition, I would use my square brackets to designate a tag name. So the flow tag is now uh, been typed in and I would simply do a filter. And so I could say flow has to be, um, equal to zero. And I would immediately see only the three assets where flow is equal to zero. Now, additionally, um, if I wanted to say flow is greater than zero, I would immediately see all of my flows that are greater than zero. I can also come into this and add a sort by feature. So my sort by would allow me to take the flow tag and reorganize the layout of my asset template based on flow volume. So in this case, it is now stacked from lowest flow ascending down to highest flow. Here in the bottom corner, you can see when I executed that filter. And by hitting the refresh in the top right hand corner, I refresh the filter. If there's been new data come in, the content would reorder and it shows me the most recent time.
If I wanted to change the order, I could use DESC for descend. And now I'll be showing flow with the highest at the top. Additionally, I could use something like a top, top 10. And now I'm showing my top 10 flows or my top five flows. Now we can see that I've got some that are also showing based on state. So if we switch this around and come and use the state tag, I can find only my pumps that are in state zero, or I could find all of my pumps that are in state non-zero. Additionally, I might want to find pumps that are uh, in state non-zero, and I could use either a double ampersand or I could type and, and those that have the tag discharge pressure that are greater than 50. Might have been a little tough to see, that, but it executed uh, very quickly. And I can see that I'm now only showing 22 of my pumps. If I take this rule out, remember I have 36 pumps. So by putting that rule back in, I filtered down to only 22 pumps. And then I can also uh, take a rule like this and uh, apply a sort by. So let's do sort by flow, descending order. Now, if I need to do um, complex logic, I can incorporate uh, my parentheses in. So let's do something a little different here. Um, let's use um, discharge pressure and suction pressure, and we'll actually create a uh, a little expression. So there's my discharge pressure. We'll subtract from it the suction pressure. And uh, we'll say that uh, I only want to see those that are less than 20. I'm going to go ahead and uh, filter out the states that are not running. There we go. So now I have 10 results uh, of when my discharge pressure and my suction pressure are less than 20. But also I am, would like to monitor this if the condition um, becomes not just less than 20. Let's do an or, double type, or I could type or. greater than, um, let's look for 30. And I'll put all of that into parentheses. So we execute that. And I might have one too many parentheses there, I think. Get my parentheses right and we should be good. There we go. So now I'm seeing uh, 14 of my pumps that are either less than 20 or greater than 20 when I take suction pressure uh, and subtract it from discharge pressure. And then of course, after all of this, um, I could come in and come back, back to the back and do a, a, do a sort by for everything and say sort by, and in this case, we could sort by the flow tag again. All right, so now that I have uh, essentially have built a report, I can come in and take this rule and turn on the template refresh. 
And notice that um, here in the template refresh, I can put in uh, a time period. So if I would like every 30 minutes for this to rerun, it will now run every 30 minutes. I can also change the number of results that show on a page. If I had only wanted to have four of these show on a page, I can uh, adjust that there. And then at the bottom of the page, my user would have to tab over to see the next page. But we'll go back to the 50 that it was set at. All right. Um, once I have saved this, save my application. Let me go ahead and delete this page. That is generally once an automated report of this nature has been built out, that's generally where the report feature then gets used. So I'll pull that application. I'll set a schedule. I'll choose what time of day I might want this to execute, what days of the week, Sunday, Monday, Friday, Saturday, enter an email address or an email group, choose include attachment. And so once that's executed every day at eight o'clock, that list as a report would be sent out to my email group, allowing essentially, um, those that are responsible for my assets to get some type of a condition-based filtered list um, or grid or report in their inbox based on the filters that I've built. Additionally, that refresh feature that now on this one would refresh every 30 minutes, but it could be as fast as one minute. Um, perfect for large monitor displays on control room walls or uh, on factory walls as well. Okay, let's talk about uh, the contains feature. So here we have a different set of data, um, still pumps, but a um, much larger list of pumps. And in these pumps, you can see that the assets are from different sites, different stations and have different pump numbers. So if I start with contains, and I didn't I didn't mention this before, but you can see grade uh, there at a slightly um, more opaque uh, color is all of the different syntaxes that you could use from how to put the tags in brackets to the format for the contains, the sort by, and so on. So we're just gonna follow that contains. Um, I'm going to actually look here into the asset name. So I'm gonna indicate that. Uh, with percentage asset percentage. So I'm telling it first where to look for the contain rule. And then inside of a single parenthesis, I'm going to ask it only to find Hayes. And now I'm only displaying my pumps that have Hayes in them. I could do this in any order. So if I wanted all station one pumps across all districts, or if I just wanted pumps that represented number two. It works just as well. Now, additionally, I could do another ampersand. Same thing. And what did I do wrong? Let's take a look here. Um, I don't believe. Ah, well, that's what's wrong. <laughs> it can't contain both. It has to be one or the other. Uh, so there we go. So um, contains Travis or contains Hayes. All right. Um, additionally, I could use the contains to also look um, at string that might be part of metadata for a tag. So I have a tag called total volume daily. And I also have metadata associated with that. I have a metadata property called horsepower. And I have a metadata property 
called model. You may not know this, but if I take the tag itself, let's do an example here. So if I come in and pick the tag for this, total volume daily, I'm gonna show total volume daily. But since I know that I have metadata here and that the property for that metadata, think description, engineering units, high set points, the property for that metadata in this case is called horsepower. So I just put a period after the tag name, type in the metadata property name, and now I'm displaying um, metadata inside of that value box. So in this case, I've recorded horsepower for my pumps as well as the model for my pumps. So that means I could box all of this in and say it also must contain. Now this time I'm gonna actually type in the tag name and horsepower. I'm sorry, I don't actually want horsepower here. Um, I want model because I'm looking for the string. So let's just do anything Berkeley. Now, if I only wanted Berkeley B62, or I could come in and just narrow it the whole way down to the 103. Let's look at anything Berkeley. And total volume daily dot horsepower is equal to 100. So I've essentially isolated and grabbed only the pumps that have a horsepower of 100 that are model Berkeley's. And after all of this, I could come in and say, and low is less than 10,000. And so I have found my one underperforming pump based on the unique specifications of that pump. All right, um, last thing that I wanted to share before uh, we start doing a QA and a um, is how we would do a query for quality score. And so here I have, um, similar to the contains, I've started uh, with quality. So it's quality parenthesis bracket, then my tag name. And then I just tell it uh, the decimal for the quality score. So if it's uh, quality score is equal to 192, then it's any of those tags that have a good score will show up. And I have 38 instances of my assets. If I say, show me only those that are not good. Now, Here's the tag, and I've got the quality score displayed. There's my uncertain quality score. So if I had any bad qualities, um, for instance, if I wanted to see uh, bad is zero, I don't have any bads. Not equal to good. Now I could come in and take this one step further and say, let's do it again. And maybe instead of ands, I would actually probably want to do ors here. Double pipe. And so I would change this to be my oil tag for yesterday. And this becomes an oil meter, OM. This becomes a water meter. And here we go. H2. And so now any of my wells that have an uncertain or a bad or a no data for any of those tags will now be displayed. And there's 11 of them that do. And of course I could do 
all of this and also then come in and say, hey, um, uh, and contains, and then put in my asset and put in my, say, I only wanna see the wells that are associated with Heltzel. And then after all that's built, I could even say now, filter this report by only if I have um, casing and tubing that is outside of X. So you can just continue to add to your expressions and continue to narrow down uh, your list. All right, um, I think that's everything I wanted to cover today. Looking at my notes, making sure I didn't leave anything out. Uh, I'm curious to uh, come in and see if we have any questions. If you have any questions, now would be a great time to raise your hand and you can ask those. I'll give you a second to pop them in either the chat or the Q&A feature. All right, I don't see any questions. Uh, if any questions would come up, easiest way to ask them uh, would be to send us an email. That's info at canarylabs.com. Oh, we've got a question coming in. Go ahead, ask away. Uh, one question coming uh, in so far. Are there any plans to add autocomplete for building the queries? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, we do recognize, of course, that um, one, uh, we are relying on uh, a bit of a pre-built knowledge um, of being able to use this feature, meaning you have to have some of the syntax down, you have to have a, a sense, and you also have to know your tag names, right? Um, we're not giving you a list of tags to pick from. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that has been discussed internally is how we can add a bit of UI to this filter, um, as well as give you the ability to maybe even select some functions and, and blocks and, and build out these expressions. Mm -hmm. So it's something we're talking about um, at this point, it's not uh, firmly on the roadmap, uh, but please stay tuned. And if it's something you think you'd like to have, please, on the help center, add that to the product request feature so that the community can vote on it. That's how we've begun to help uh, prioritize our roadmap. All right, another question. If you have a property for a target value, can you use the asset template to compare each asset to its target and show the ones that are not within a certain variance? All right. If I have a property for a target value, um, would a high set point be an example of that? If I have a, um, a high set point uh, for my pressure, can I use the asset template to compare each asset to its target and show the ones that are not within a certain variance? Ah, I see. Um, possibly. Let me, uh, and I'll have you give me some feedback, Darlene, in the chat as I'm doing this, okay? Um, so I have here a tag called discharge high set point. Um, and I have some, I believe that I have set equal to 100. Yes, I do. So there are 25 that are set to 100. Um, Let's do a discharge pressure divided by high set point times 100 uh, greater than 100. And now there are my two that are over 100% of the high set point. Now I could have done that a little easier, right? I could have just said 
um, you know, is discharge pressure greater than high set point? But um, I might want to look for only those that are outside of 110% of the set point, right? So that gives me more of a relation. Now, none of mine are above 110%, but I might have one, only one of them is outside 101%. So that allows me to actually understand a little bit more of to what variance. Uh, okay, and I went down a different path. So let's see, you followed up and said, I was thinking more if you had a target flow rate for a well, it would be a property of the flow rate tag for the well rather than a tag. Yes, great question. So um, yeah, so in that case, um, I don't think I've got metadata here on that example. Let's do it over here. So just like I was calling horsepower or model, I could do the exact same thing that I just did. Now, I don't think in this case, and it's gonna to be tough because I don't have, but let's say that, let's say on this flow tag, okay, let's say on this flow tag, I had a metadata property of what I thought that pump should be producing, or in your case, a well should be producing. In that case, I would say, same thing, I would just say flow, um, and it could be, you know, divided by that tag again, and then that metadata name. So let's just say um, expectation might be what you called that, expected flow. And you would associate it, obviously, with the flow tag. Um, and then again, same thing, uh, times 100 is, uh, is less than 90%. So now I'm seeing only my wells that are Underproducing by 10% of expected. Another option there, Darlene, um, would be to use the calculation server to actually build that as a calculated tag and then use our event service to monitor uh, calcs and events within monitor those wells based on asset type and go ahead and give you an alarm alert state tag that says whether a well's been producing what you'd like or not. Uh, I'd love to have more conversation with you around that, um, as well as somebody on our team that uh, has a good bit of experience in helping uh, oil and gas companies uh, with asset monitoring. So feel free to email us info at canarylabs.com. All right, well, um, I don't see any more questions coming in. And uh, Darlene, we look forward to talking to you more and as well as all the other attendees, uh, please feel free to reach out. This is a really exciting feature that when used and set up properly can really help automate workflows for your automation superstars.